Okay. Let me know if the casters are at a good volume for you guys. Okay, so starting this off, I have not seen these games. Not seen them. I saw game three because I woke up in the morning and it was still going, so I watched it. It wasn't that exciting. What happened to TSM's jackets, by the way? These hoodies are not good. I like their old jackets. Their, old, their uniform is much better. Maybe they got a new sponsor or something, so they had to make something quick. Okay, slightly loud. Okay, I'll turn them down a little bit. Dropping frames. No, they're not dropping frames. Okay. Obviously, are also contested. The thing about these guys is they have so much overlap within their champion pools. A question that we had, though, was whether... Okay, so Azir, probably a smart ban here. Maokai, Lulu, makes sense. But Lulu has really been like a centerpiece of TSM's compositions throughout the playoffs. So just get rid of that. You're not going to be worried about the Olaf as long as you ban the Lulu. Callista, Ash, okay, Ash, whatever. Uh, Alistair, because Aphromoo is great on that champion, and they know he likes to engage. So, Braum first, that's going to cut off a lot of possible poke compositions that could come in from TSM, plus just a strong pick. <clears throat> Kog'Maw in, in LCS is a flex pick. We don't really see it played mid in Korea any longer. Nidalee, so Nidalee, your strong early game jungler. Not sure why they would choose... Wait, what patch is this? Nidalee, definitely. I guess Elise is better, but whatever. Yeah. yeah. A little bit interesting. We thought people were going to try and deny x Smithy's jungle pool in the semifinals. Mm -hmm. I would yeah, think that at least, but... <clears throat> this is good disengage. So, basically, uh, CLG is setting up for a lot of disengage to protect double lift so that he can isolate a target with Gragas and then start resetting. You can do this 5.14, thank you. Okay, it's, uh, Korea is on, is on 5.15, that's what I was asking. Uh, 5.15 is what we were using for the playoffs for KU KT. And what we will be using for the finals on Saturday. So you can run Vayne here, you can run Jinx here, you can run Tristana here. These are all fine, but if you get a lane swap situation, you really have some nice work you can do with your Tristana. Plus, as you scale into range in the late game, you'll be able to hit those stuns, so it's all good. Uh, TSM lacks any kind of primary engage. Now, remember they didn't run primary engage compositions versus Team Liquid either. So, this is a bit suspect. They they did have to rely on Dyrus. Now, he did get some nice teleport flanks in there to make it work. But probably this composition, which is based around poke, shouldn't be that successful. And it doesn't really matter whether this is mid or AD carry. We know pretty much, because Ash is banned... One thing they could do is play Cog mid and Ash AD carry for primary engage, but that's not going to happen. And there's no other AD carry you can really engage with besides Ash, unless you're running like Callista Kennen. And Yasuo top. So, for those of you who don't know, this is um, this comes from Korea. So, what happens? What happens is that. Uh, Yasuo, for those of you who don't know why Yasuo is picked, and this is a someday from KT counterpick, is that <clears throat> top Yasuo into Nar. So what happens with the Yasuo-Nar matchup, if you get the 1v1, is that basically Windwall has a really interesting mechanic with Boomerang toss from Nar, where you guys know that if Nar throws out his Boomerang and then he catches it, then he gets a partial cooldown refund on the Boomerang. So what you do is because Boomerang without that is like a 20 plus second cooldown if you don't catch the Boomerang, uh, what happens is that Windwall actually just blocks the Boomerang and pre prevents Gnar from harassing you. And then you can just go through the minion line and start just like autoing the Gnar. And it's a really good matchup for Yasuo. And he can split push basically forever against, um, against Gnar by doing that. So this, like I said, this is a pick that we've seen in Korea Top lane Yasuo, but the only time we see it is against uh, against Nar. Yes, I know people are saying it came from Impact. No, it came from it came from Korea. It came from someday. 
So. So this is a good pick. I mean, this is strong. Plus, you get... You can help... Uh, if you get people low with Last Breath, then you get Tristana resets. Huge amount of backline burst between Yasuo and the Victor. So this is a really strong composition. They have strong protection. You can isolate somebody with a Gragas cast and then blow them up uh, 100 to 0 with Victor and Tristana and Yasuo. You have a lot of protection. I really like this draft from TSM, I think, or from CLG rather. This is really strong. He's been practicing this pick since Yasuo. week one of the LCS. And specifically as a Knar counter matchup. It emerged over in Asia. It was used to great success over and over again. Really like to see this isolation. So CLG definitely wants the one versus one, Yasuo versus Nar. So in the LPL playoffs, Yasuo was one of the most contested picks because of how much those teams team fight. But that was also Yasuo mid, yeah. mid lane. Yasuo top lane is a special flavor here. Obviously, oh, this yeah, what's the last yeah, pick so gonna be? Not, so let's go a little bit more into why Yasuo is good against Nar. He can win while the boomerang, then you don't get the cooldown refresh. Uh, uh, TF will get shoved in by Victor. Yeah, or he's the. TF is fine, but you don't. This is TSM's composition. See, the problem is that they lack primary engage. They only have secondary engage with Gnar unless... Because the thing is, Gnar just isn't reliable. And Dyrus did do a good job with this uh, in the previous series of hitting that teleport with, like, the perfect Gnar bar into Gnar ultimate. But that's not reliable. And when we talk about primary engage, you have to have something that's on a relatively low cooldown that can initiate a team fight. Uh, CLG... Now, they don't have much either, but they do have Gragas. And Gragas is fine because of his explosive cask. But there's really nothing here. This is like a poke composition. <coughs> and you can run p compositions without primary engage. But what that means is that you always have to have priority on the dragon. Or the baron. You literally, if, if both teams play well, you have to have your team on the dragon because if CLG gets to the dragon first and they just start doing it, you will not have time to poke them out adequately and you can't engage on them very effectively because they have so much disengage. They can just grog assault you away or whatever. So TSM, when you play compositions like this, you are committing to being at the dragon first and that's kind of what you have to play around is uh, tower sieging and dragon control. Whereas CLG has more flexibility in that. So, we're just going to move forward. Alright, so, we did spend a lot of time talking about the Yasuo and CLG side because of that pick. But, on TSM side, the reason why TSM picked NAR so early is because... Like I said, you, this comp isn't bad from TSM, but it does mean that if you start to fall behind, you will just get smashed. Because you never have a way to contest Dragon or Baron unless the enemy team makes a mistake. I think CLG found a really good way for their team to play double with Flazy's late game, Tristana, really good ADK. I also would not play uh, compositions like this, generally speaking, in NA. I just think if you're in NA, you should just run like full engage 24 7 because it's. It, 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 more teams, because they're not as good, are going to make macro errors. So just play full engage because you'll catch them out. They're, they won't be in the right place at the right time. And if you have something like Maokai or Thresh, it's just. It's really, really strong in NA. Exactly what CLG is going for in this game. One thing that I should mention about the champion select, Zion Spartan is not really a Maokai player, which is one of the more reasons that they banned that. It's the True. Nar yeah. and the Olaf that have been the contested picks between Dyrus and Zion Spartan. Another reason that the Nar was picked. TSM obviously expecting this pretty much exact layout from CLG. The Yasuo definitely a twist for them, uh, but they were definitely expecting the uh, double lift Afro. Okay, so. so this style of invade is very common, used to be very common in Korea, okay? So what, they, what they're going to do is you put wards here, here, and here, right? Uh, there's also the possibility that maybe you drop one here or in river, uh, and then you take away their buff. But this is a nice counter ward from TSM. Now, we saw this a lot towards the middle of the season in Korea. Teams would do this and just try and take an early buff and make enemy jungling pathing harder because you'll notice they're going to send their duo down to the bottom lane whereas this duo is up here so this is risky and the reason why this is risky is because when teams realize that you're doing this for example sk telecom had a game where they just stacked like five people right here and ran in and just 
owned a level one, just completely destroyed. I forget who they were playing against. Um, so there is risk of this because if the enemy team does get into river, uh, or they happen to have people like stacking and try, there's there's an element of risk. So it's generally pretty good though. It also can detect lane swaps. They should back out if they see this. Yeah, they know they're there. Yeah. So as soon as they see this, they it's hard because the timer obviously is up close to 155, but they should just back out. Okay, they do. That's smart. So once they realize it's a lane swap, can't do that anymore. Uh, they actually are... Ooh, that's curious. They're gonna go for the Raptors. That's that's nice. It's a nice adaptation. Okay. So, otherwise... Pretty standard start here. Looks like... Uh, Afro and Doublelift got Krugs. Okay, so this is cool. So, Aframu just took both Krugs... Oh, we didn't hit level 2. That sucks, actually. Maybe they messed that up. Because in this situation, if you have the Braum... If you have the Braum hit level 2 in a lane swap, he can roam really effectively. But regardless, it's still creative. Oh, he did, he did get level 2. There he is. Alright, I'm done. I can't read. Oh, no, I can read. It's 1. <laughs> Oops! He did hit two. I can't even read these numbers right now. Oh, I see. He did hit two. Okay, that's good. So if he hits two and recalls, then he's going to have more impact on the map, obviously. So this opens up a lot of options. This is a very creative level one from CLG. Because if that if that ward had not been there, and as long as they were confident that TSM wasn't uh, uh, grouping and trying to kill them in the jungle, if that ward hadn't been there, they could have just taken this and then path back through their own jungle like that and Braum would have been level two so also what they could have done in that scenario is taken this camp then raptors afro recalls and then they try and kill bjergsen in mid lane so we'll never know what their plan was right there because that ward from tsm and the lane swap maybe messed it up a little bit but it's cool that was like there's a lot of flexibility in that level one i haven't seen that level one before this is new this is a it, i don't know if clg invented it or maybe i just didn't see another game where somebody did it but that's that's pretty neat So they see John on the bottom side uh, against Tristana, so they're just going to try and gank topside. Now, Nidalee is here, but Nidalee is not in position, and they have no way... Remember right now, TSM has no way to know that there is a level 2 Braum coming. They have not seen Braum. So they don't know where he is or what he's doing, and he's he's not normally level 2 at this time. He's probably dead. So they saw Nidalee at the tri brush. Normally you'd be like, well, why didn't you flash for that? But they saw, they had a ward here from Braum. This is a really good jungle pathing. I'm actually really impressed by this. That's very creative. Uh, Turtle did the smart thing. He went back down to tri brush where Nidalee was, didn't have to use any summoners. So TSM sort of dodged out on that level one, but that was still really nice from CLG. There were, they had so many different plays they could make as a result of that level one, depending on whether the lane swap came through or not. But TSM also reacted well. They did the right things. Their level one ward was good. Uh, they, they waited at base gate to show late, so definitely CLG didn't get much out of that. But that was, uh, that was like a fun lane swap to watch. <laughs> These are the things you guys have to keep in mind when you watch lane swaps. They're really, really complicated. So meanwhile, on the other side, they get some deep wards in. These are nice. So nice job by Lost Boy. I hate, you know what, I don't like this because I would like to see a record, like, I know he's played more than one Tristana game, 
but it would be nice to see what 100% actually means. Because if it's like 8-0, obviously that's way better than 3-0 or much more impressive. Specifically what COD uses for Astana so well for there is the ability to demolish turrets so quickly. Especially in the mid and late game, COG loves to group up and just out-rotate the opponent. And even if they get two or three seconds ahead with a late game Trist... Okay, I don't know why he's ganking mid. I mean, he's ganking for his Orianna. The problem with Santorin with Nidalee. So, here's the, here's the main issue with picking Nidalee. I, instead of something like Elise. Is that, first off, Elise would offer you more pick pressure. Um, but second off, you have to consider when you pick a jungle what the rest of your composition is going to be. He can't really gank for an Orianna lane very effectively, especially against a Victor with heal. He can't really gank for Dyrus pre-level 6, and he can't gank for Janna, so he kind of just can't do anything in this game. And Gragas is like a million times stronger than Nidalee late, because all Nidalee can do is just throw spears, whereas Gragas can disengage, he can engage, he's much tankier. And they have plenty of damage, right, between Tristana, Victor, and Yasuo, so they don't need that. So I don't, I don't, I think, I think NA and EU in general have, like, too much of a, what, this doesn't do anything. You can't commit to that gank. Hold on, did they know where Gragas was? Okay, I think they literally knew where Gragas was. Okay, they see him on a ward. They don't know where Braum is. Braum just went through river. No, they did. They saw him on a ward walking in the river. They know he's coming. They're going to see him on a pink ward. Holy shit. This is a terrible gank. So they know... They know, okay, there's no shockwave yet for Orianna. Orianna has no mana. They do they know Exmithy is at Raptors, and they know that Braum just walked into the mid lane. And they thought they could kill a heal flash victor. Like what the fuck? So they, they trade two flashes for a heal, and they're lucky they didn't die. Meanwhile, Santora or Zion Spartan rather is just able to farm with Windwall in this top side. I don't even know what TSM's plan was there. That's just like straight up terrible. <laughs> there were so many things wrong with that. Knew where two people were that could respond to that gank, overcommitting into the mid lane. Uh, the fact that Victor has heal and flash, the fact that no one is six, the fact that Oriana has no mana, like, there was like a 0% chance of that succeeding unless Poe Belter was seriously fucking awful. Wait, what? What is this? We will get this repaired as soon as possible for you in-house on the screens. Six and a half in first blood going over to Counterlogic Gaming in the top lane. We'll also inform you of the situation. We're good to go. Oh! We'll be back on the screen in just a second. Okay, so let's look at the setup of that because we didn't actually see it. Okay, so let's look at their pathing afterwards so we can figure out why they were doing what they were doing. So I'm pretty sure that Braum, I think that Afro saw the pink ward when he was walking through this brush earlier, so he knows that they can't take that route. They already have a ward in try. So they just basically respond to this gank because they know that Lustboy just used his flash. So just kill him. It's really easy. Lustboy and Wild Turtle push up. Yeah, so easy. Such an easy kill. It's like a... That's a smart gank. And they took advantage of TSM's mistake. Yeah, hopefully we can get a replay of that. But it is first blood over to Zion Spartan, which is the critical thing. We're back. But you see, that's an immediate punishment. Like, I don't even know what TSM is doing. They know that they just blew Flash in the mid lane, yet they go to push up on the turret when they have no vision control. They had no wards in River. Their only ward was this pink one right here. And instead, they're just able to walk right behind them. It's, 
I mean, this is just simple shit. It's just that strong. Sometimes it happens. Thank you for sticking with us for the short moment there. Seven minutes in, we'll get a replay of that. If possible, back on your screen. The kill yeah. did go over to Zion Spartan in the top lane. And specifically, CLG focused Lustboy, which was the point of that gank. Lustboy burned the flash in the mid lane. So. Okay, so they had a ward in River, actually, but that's not enough information. He is the target of this game. Perfect cue from Aphromu and the follow. Yeah, Zion just flashing to get right in there. There's a nice well. trinket no ward in the brush there, so Aphro could line that up. It was really well coordinated by CLG. I mean, it wasn't that hard to do, but... In the beginning. Let's see if they can continue to carry this. Now, CLG have had the better early game uh, consistently all yep. split long over TSM. And it has been TSM biding their time and waiting till later yeah. in the game for the I crucial feel like dragon fights, the mid game fights to turn it back around in their favor. TSM more than any other team is okay with that. Just hanging out for the Interesting. Game and so Dyrus yeah, has to go for a full tank okay. this game, yeah. Yeah. which yeah. means that he's not going to be able to split push against the Astro pretty much at all. And Orion and Cog will have to get huge. During the semifinals, CLG was falling behind early to tip quite frequently. It happened in both games 1 and 2, sometimes by as much as 4000 gold by the 13 minute mark. Yet, CLG actually displayed very strong team fighting against Team Impulse, yeah. using their tank line properly. This game, they have an incredibly high damage team fight team and a lot of initiation potential, but not the same type of front line they had in the Team Impulse game. And TSM is a much better team fighting team than Team Impulse, so it's yeah. going to be really interesting to watch. That's a big thing that NAR does bring, uh, is a ranged AoE initiation where he can throw his body in and get an AoE stun down. So both teams lot of tools for the mid-game team fight right now it actually looks like smithy's jumped the wall into the back of dragon i think yeah, on he's the sneaking it. there so he's sneaking it well, that's okay so, so this is already remember we talked about the picks and bands and this is already problematic because this is a very early dragon it's not a five minute dragon but it's still i mean it's like 39 minute fifth dragon now or a 33 minute rather so uh, taking uh taking the fifth dragon at 33 minutes is really early and basically tsm is married to this to this dragon protection like they can't they can't just let clg get dragons for free in the early game but the other issue with TSM is if they group for a dragon, Doublelift is playing Tristana, so he can just fast push down a tower really easily and just give up dragons after that because that's really TSM's way of winning this game. Yeah, I don't think this comp is very good from TSM. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's subpar. It's definitely not good. It limits you too much strategically, whereas CLG has some nice lane counter picks. And they're just going to try and... Santorin's here just to try and br just take down the turret this is smart this is a good way to use nidalee that is the advantage of having nidalee is that her heal gives you that auto attack speed bonus so you can you can actually play well around turrets if you need to go in lane it's what samsung uh this year samsung did a lot with eve when they played nidalee they played for tower pressure with nidalee so that's nice i mean they steal a blue buff too they're doing what they can And they're still behind though. So they're just trying to push down mid lane. They want to finish off this turret. This is a good idea. Victor's low on mana. He's not really going to be able to fight right now. And they took his blue buff, but they're going to try. He flashes for this. Smithy should have flashed. Why are they going to get these kills anyway? Oh, no. I think they actually could have gotten more. Because if we, if we take a look at right here... So, the TSM walks forward on this to take out... Because they this is good gravity field positioning, so they for uh Pobelter forces Bjergsen forward. And this is really, really risky. 
So Tristana's in the top side, so they're going to maintain pressure right now on the turret. And Zion Spartan already, because of First Blood, has that shiv. So he's got some more move speed, which is nice. Though, I do think that... Do they see Gragas? Okay, they know Gragas is coming. So if they know Gragas is coming, Bjergsen shouldn't be walking forward right here. It's actually probably better for him to take that stun right here than it is for him to walk forward into this dangerous area. Because Gragas is there. I do think Xmithy should have flashed for this, though. Because if you imagine, if he flashes right here and then puts the cask here instead, like, more than one person is dying 100%. Because they know that the flash for Orianna, you, you already have, like, guaranteed Orianna, but... Yeah, you flash for that, and you put the barrel here, and you knock them up the ramp, and they're dead. Because they have to use a flash anyway. Look at Aphromoo. He's going to flash right here just to get the initiation with the Glacial Fissure. But since they had to use one flash to engage that, they could have gotten more. Yeah, Pope Belter has no mana, but Zion Spartan is right here. What the fuck? Dyrus is dead? Well, I don't, I don't know what happened up there. He was hiding in this brush while Zion was in lane. But you have to expect that movement on the map because if you're TSM and Tristana's already taken this turret, Tristana's all about fast pushing. She'll immediately swap to top lane. That's exactly where she should be in this situation. That's some really fortunate placement from the Scuttlecrab too, by the way. They got lucky it was there. Well, free turret and free solo kill. Well, now double lift's like insanely far ahead. I want to see that replay. But in any case, that is, you should expect Tristana to be there. Because that's where she should be at this time. It would be much weirder for her to be in the mid lane right now. Yeah. I think you flash, you flash cast for that. I mean, it, that's a minor error. They still get the kill onto Bjergsen, but they probably could have gotten another kill. Because the other thing you have to consider is if they had just blown them back into this choke point and killed two of them, because of the where the minion wave is right now, they could have immediately pushed and killed mid. So that actually does make a difference. What happened top? Well, escaping a few times in the top, CLG's found a few kinks in the armor, though, and they've been able to bring in a bit of gold. That on the 80 carry that made in the top. The two people that are going to be yeah. in the DPS for this composition. So, more power to Rivington. the here as they move into the mid and here. able to bring in a bit of gold. Let me, let me talk about something that I don't think you should say well, casting. Hold on. a few times in the top, CLG's found a few kinks in the armor. So, the problem with saying chinks in the armor is that when you cast Asian players, it can come off as really bad. So if you guys are an aspiring caster, I try to avoid that phrase, even though it's a nice idiom in English, you just don't want any controversy about that shit. Dangerous. Dangerous. Phrases to avoid while casting. Okay, if he said kinks in the armor, that's not even, that's not a phrase. Kinks in the armor sounds like some sort of medieval Fifty Shades of Grey. Okay, so we're back to split pushing. This is where Zion wants to be right now. And this grouping is going to be really difficult to... Oh, nice. Okay, good flash there. Made up for it. Good job, Xmithy. That was a nice play. 
But, like I said, they could have gotten that tower probably earlier. This is all theoretical, but when you're looking at a game, you want to really break it down like this to see, okay, what could we have done here? Would it have ended up differently? I think that they could have, if they had flashed earlier, they would have gotten two kills and then pushed down the mid faster, but it doesn't really matter in this particular instance because they get it anyway and they make use of that flash later to get another kill on a Bjergsen, so that's good. Even more than we were expecting out of COG's early game. As far as the matchup is concerned, yeah. COG is a little bit better than TSM in the early game, but they are crushing it in the first 14 minutes here. Working together, making sure the roams are in their favor, catching people in transit already. They've done it to Bjergsen a few times, trying to get Wild Turtle on the top. CLG really holding on to the early part of this game. Let's see if they can pressure that anymore. Already one dragon in their favor for 30 seconds into the next one. You're saying Nick Smithy doing very well. It seems like the team also follows him more on his engages. There's much more trust in that. So all out of turrets down, huge lead. And now this is really where we're going to see the problem with TSM's composition. So if you are in a situation with this composition with very little engage and you lose all your outer turrets and you're down in gold, unless CLG horribly misplays Dragon, there's no way for you to come back into this game. Because they will always have vision advantage, they will always have pressure advantage, and you need to poke them at the dragon. That is how you win. You kite with this composition. And if you're playing a kiting comp, uh, or a poke comp like this, it's just absolutely terrible to have this happen. Because what CLG can do is if they ward up well enough, Dyrus won't be able to get an efficient flank in, because they can just back away with Grog Assault and with, um, with Braum and then re-engage onto the dragon whenever they feel like it. So there's basically no way without CLG misplaying for TSM to contest dragon now. So basically TSM just has to hope that CLG really fucks up. That's like the only way they win this game. And it's, like I said, it's not that this is a bad composition. You just know that if this composition falls behind, you're just boned. That's it. You accept the risk of this comp when you decide to play it. And now with Dragon Live, they're just going to push out all the sideways, and TSM really has no way to contest this. Yep, so this is really easy Dragon for CLG. There's not really anything they can do. The fact that Zion Spartan's so far ahead, and he's building Trinity Force, this is such an incredibly high damage Yasuo build. This is exactly what Someday does, by the way. Trinity Force, or uh, Shiv into Trinity Force. Really strong. It's very expensive, but it's incredibly powerful. Either way, that's the style, the, the pace they're playing at right now. Already two dragons at the 16 minute mark. Pretty quick counter if they want to get up to five dragons. And already that pretty substantial full lead. Oh yeah, Zion actually going to go for that Trinity Force maybe it looks like with Yasuo, which has grown in popularity. So, we're kind of probably over. Dyrus has done a good job at getting himself kept up in CS. Like basically I feel like we're just going to watch dragon fights. And then eventually TSM is going to figure out that they can't actually engage, lose a team fight, then lose the game. See if I'm right. Remember, I have not seen these games. But I bet the shit hits the fan at this next dragon fight. Yeah, they just have no wave clear either. Like, the only wave clear they really have is Orianna. And they can't stop the split pushing. Also, Turtle could get dove under that turret at any time right now. He could just instantly die. This could be a moment where CLG actually press a bit I'm sad we never got to see that Dyrus. Why didn't we see that Dyrus solo kill? Like, what the fuck happened up there? We didn't even get to see a replay of it. Okay, so split pushing, yay. This is how you properly close out this game. Great wards from CLG. Okay, free turret. 
as someone trying to stop this is if you're not together, one Grog Assault into a Yasuo means you're dead. Trying to look at TSM's initiations as well. Once they want it, two walls that are going to pretty much stop things from happening. A lot of damage is not going to get by. And for an Oriana having your ball stop. Oh, yeah, Riverton brings up a good point. This is the uh, Yasuo Brom combo. Papa Smithy and I like to call it Unbreaking Wind. <laughs> but. Uh, Kogma is not going to do damage in these fights. It's such an incredibly strong utility combo. Uh, okay. And then blue buff contest. Okay, yep, just contest the blue, take out the turret. Very easy. CLG is doing a really good job with their macro this game. Hi, Turtle. There you go. There's the flash cask. Nice. What a nice explosive cask, but everybody was actually out of position as well for the monsoon from Lust Boy, so it does save some members on Team Solo Mid. Valiantly goes down to save the rest of the team, but that would have been a very big catch. Oh, they gave up the blue buff. Oh, it took red. Okay. Well, they got a kill for it. That wasn't actually the best thing they could have done. Because if you look at this setup, okay, you chunked out Wild Turtle. Okay, that's fine. You've already won that fight. In fact, the better thing to do right there, the better thing to do is after you take out Turtle because you already have top lane pressure here and you don't have the Victor ult anymore, just, I mean, you could just walk mid right now. Gragas is tanky enough to probably tank that turret at this point in time. What does he have? Eh, maybe not. But they probably could have taken mid tier two instead. But it's not that big of a deal. You still, you still force Turtle's flash and his heal. So maybe maybe another missed opportunity there where they could have gotten maybe a little bit more. Wait, what? Alright, whatever. Uh, Tristana doesn't really have the items to take that duel yet. She needs more ramp time to actually be effective in that way. Well, I don't know if that was worthwhile. Slowing down CLG's push. That's actually good for TSM. That's definitely a good trade for them to make at this point in time. They both got one crit there, I think. But that was... There's no need to do that. not do this virus TSM. I would also not throw that explosive cask. That's sloppy from both sides. That's incredibly risky. <laughs> Windwall, yeah, so troll. Oh, what the Zion fuck? Damage, and he takes just about his full health bar. TSM's oh, that's bad. Right, his dragon spawns too. Some of that gold on the map. Oh, man. So that's fine. I mean, you're stopping the turret damage from coming in, but 
literally double lift is right here. You should not go forward on this. You already used your wind wall. Just let double lift clear out the turret and wait for Gragas. Fortunately, he still has TP, so he can TP back into a dragon fight, but that shouldn't happen. That was a big mistake by CLG, though. There was no need to make that. And now TSM gets a dragon, so they're back in this game. They did a good job of sieging, but... I mean, you just can't go in front of the wind wall like that. That's some poor communication from CLG about who was there and when Gragas was going to be there. Okay, getting that uncontested dragon is basically the only way TSM can get a dragon right now, realistically. Okay, so now they have to... This is the right call from CLG. If you can't get that dragon, you now have to set up for the Baron. And see if you can get a pick here. You have the tools to do it, so just absolutely 100% control that side of the jungle. Uh, I don't like this on Gragas. I think you should get Upgraded Sweeper instead. But he also didn't go Sightstone this game. I don't know about that. I think you could just delay the Aegis. This is not that much of a magic threat at this point in time. Like certainly Aegis is nice, but I don't think you get I don't think you go you try and rush the Aegis because you lose so much vision control. And tell me right now. Okay, so here's the problem with rushing the Aegis in this comp. TSM does not want to fight you. Right? They don't want to fight you at all. They can only kite, right? Which means they have to be able to see you. They can't kite out from a surprise Gragas ultimate. Which means that you're not even try like you're gonna win this team fight anyway if you're CLG, whether you have the uh, the Aegis or not, more than likely. But what you need is to convince them to face check a dragon or face check a, a Baron. And if you can't control vision, then you. A lot of these, a lot of these from X Smithy. He's hit a couple good ones, but he's also hit a couple really bad ones. Um, and he's done. That's another one where he could have flashed. But just taking a look at at what they're trying to do right now, if they had had an extra sweeper and then the longer wards from the from the sight stone, they probably would have been in better shape. Because what the fuck did that Aegis do right there? Nothing. The advantage might be is if he gets a fast banner. But I think he's probably going to go lock it. If you go fast banner, and you can continue to keep split pushing, that might be okay. Holy fuck, CLG, just kill them. Uh, this is the problem with using that explosive cast like that. If you play Gragas, you really have to commit to make him to plays. There's TSM just poking them. TSM is now just kiting them all the way around the map and taking out outer turrets, and now they're even. So there hasn't been enough decisive play or decisive initiations here from CLG. CLG should have... You either keep up with the split push and you just commit to the fact that Zion Spartan has a shiv and a trinity force, or you actually control vision properly around one of these objectives because look at this these have says wards everywhere now there are no wards in the inventory of clg they have a sight stone and then one ward upgraded ward trinket off cooldown Well, 4 TSM, since this early six kills that CLG picked up. Yeah. 
Alright, let's see what we see of the next dragon, though. Team Soap's doing the right thing. They're controlling the Baron so that... Basically, if CLG can't get onto that dragon first, then TSM will be in a good situation. But they can do dragon very easily with Yasuo Windwall to stop the dragon damage coming through. So this is smart. Keep slow pushing. They should have been doing this earlier. Finally using that big advantage they have on Yasuo. Still not enough wards from CLG. This is like... Nobody's buying wards on CLG. This is really bad vision control from them. Because they only have a few wards on the map, and they don't have any in their inventories. And they only have two pinks down. Yeah, I think you just do this. Yeah, they can just disengage any time, so there's not really a lot of risk to doing that, Baron. So they force TP. So CLG right now, their goal should be they already got the TP out. Oh man. Mm, mm, no, no, that was bad. No, you can't do that. Okay, so it looks impressive because Victor nearly killed everybody. And maybe they can get a Baron off this. Ooh. Ooh, maybe they can, actually. Mm. This is a good way to throw a game right here. Yeah, you can't do that, Baron. Okay, so let's talk about that. So why was that bad? Okay, you need this. Remember how we talked about primary engage? Glacial Fissure is not a really great form of primary engage. Plus, the jungler is mega chunked out already. So if you're CLG, the best play to make here, in my opinion, look at this. You have a minion wave right here. Your minions are going to meet about right here in the mid lane. Just clear out the waves. You already got what you wanted, which is Dyrus's flash. Now you can just split push forever with the Yasuo. You don't need to fight this at all. You just need to poke them and get them off the objective, and you can do that. Just send just send Zion Spartan, like, into the top lane. Now, it does hurt... Well, he's got a trinket ward up, so he can ward for himself to make it a little bit safer. Because, look, you've already pushed them back right here. You can fall through the tri brush and try and just, like, at least threaten that, and then just run down mid with the rest of everybody else. Well, Dyrus doesn't have TP up. So, yeah, shouldn't do that. Um, and then, this is such a forced engage. Watch this. Hello, team. Literally nobody here. You have four people on the other side of this wall. And you'll watch, watch this. Zion's actually going to flash for this right here because he wants to get the ult off. Oh, there he is. Too bad nobody's in the air anymore. That's how far away he was. So, no. You know, this. They got a bunch of flashes, which which is, you know, it's, it's good, but they also had to use a bunch of flashes, so it comes out pretty much even. And they can't do the Baron. So CLG has been stubbornly refusing. This is it, this says to me that they don't really know how to play with this Yasuo. They don't really know his limits. And they probably picked this up just because it is a really nice lane counter pick. And it's not that Zion's been doing badly. It's just that as a team, they're not playing around the Yasuo, the fed Yasuo very well. And it went really well for this Yasuo in the game. 
It's up 40 CS, has got that first blood. But they're definitely not doing as much with it as they could. And going for Baron right here is just not smart. I think you just go... In fact, if I'm CLG at the conclusion of this fight, I think you just run into topside. You know, screw this. Just screw Baron. Just go take kill their tower. discrepancy and CLG is trying to drive this home but they are really pressing their luck here Smithy's been below half health for about a minute and a half Baron is going down this, no Kog'Maw for this fight this is a very Barry. dangerous steal but Smithy's going yeah. down before and they have to push him back now they have they sufficient have wards but they can't all mass board. recall Pope Belter has to stay because he has blue buff so he's actually going to have mana Pope Belter will delay the recall yep that's fine so game one, pretty exciting so far. <laughs> I'm completed now. Uh, if TSM doesn't get an Aegis or a Lock at any time soon, that Chaos Storm and Death Ray, instead of taking three people low, is going to kill three people straight out. And let's talk a little bit about Cobelter for CLG, because all yeah. split long, every time he gets an interview, he wants to talk about how he's going to prove himself as a top North American mid laner. During the regular season, he was not able to best Bjergsen. This is his chance to make his case. Absolutely. So this is what they should have been doing earlier. Maintain control over Tribrush, top side of the jungle, split push onto the tier two. Very simple. Make sure that your team can actually ward that jungle, which they can't because Nick Smithy still doesn't have long-term vision. People have been talking about Pobelter's potential for years. He started playing at such a young age, he wasn't even available to join. The epitome of potential. It's everything. We'll see what he does with that 3-0 potential in this game. Those well, Cindy Boots keep him spamming out that DPS. See Dyrish finishing up the Black Cleaver as well. Going to get a little bit of damage out of him. So, uh, I so guess we're not split pushing? Okay. So, this is what happens. This is what happens if you try to engage with this composition. You can't, you can't do it. It's not a thing that works. Goodbye. Okay, now we see the problem with this comp, right? This is where everything starts to come unraveled. Okay, so TSM tries to control the vision. Remember how you cannot engage with this? Okay, Bjergsen's in trouble, right? So he uses the shockwave right there. No, you can't save... You can't save Bjergsen right now. And that, ooh, that was a really nice cask. Pushing him in. You just have to let him die. You don't have a choice, otherwise everybody dies. And now I have no idea why they think they can continue this fight. They just have to get the fuck out of there. So easy Baron with the wind wall, even though people are relatively low and Smithy isn't that tanky yet, all things considered. So just go for that. Okay. Where's the dragon? Yeah, let's watch this replay. That's a good engage by Aphromoo. As soon as they land the slow, so everyone goes on him. Like, he knows with the slow, he can light up the ultimate, and Bjergsen slashes down for the previous fight. So it was curtains as Very soon as nice. he that first spell. Very nice burst. On CLG knew to pile off. They were all on the same page there. Zion immediately follows up. Pobelter flashes in for the extra damage to secure the kill. Like, I, I don't even know why they keep going in after this. You can't fight this team. They have too much crowd control. Like, what were they expecting? You just leave. Bjergsen is dead. Bjergsen, no flash. There are five people right here. Nidalee and Nara up here. These two just need to walk the fuck away. 
They still have... Turtle still has Flash. He can get out of there. You're not winning this fight. There is no. There is no chance. After that happens, as soon as you see that Yasuo ult go off, and you certainly... You certainly don't do this. Which is, after Lust Boy, you don't walk towards the Braum in Unbreakable that you're dealing zero damage to. No. No. And you also don't go in on Nidalee. No. Er, er, X. No, 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 no. Now he thinks maybe he can get a finisher off here and jump back up. Uh, because he has a pink ward there and he doesn't see any wards. So he thinks maybe they can get back up. But that's also accounting for the fact that no one's actually going to throw a ward up there. TSM this late in the game not ready to even participate in the fight they were all in scatter mode they can't wave clear these minions. okay this game's over now we'll go for a dive in a game winning play we heard Bjergsen at the beginning of this game CLG and the games have been very close that they've been playing else this turret may fall the minion wave a little too far behind with this being a barren up siege minion next wave Oriana ball out and try and land a sitting shockwave That's right there the ability to manipulate is really hard they're going all in on this turret. They use the Solari active there and take it down. Nice push by CLG. CLG now opening up the base. Been able to snow. Ludens echo there. Yeah. Smithy though, he's the. They'd be a little greedy to stay longer. They know they have such a big advantage right now. Are built in. Uh, Paul Belter is going to continue to destroy them. Yeah. Victor pick as well. Did not come up till the end of the season. We saw the Victor pick and the liquid tiebreaker, and then in the game. Okay, well. Good night. Oh, yeah, somebody's gonna die. The stun out. Dyrus, I don't know why he went Black Cleaver. He went Randuin's into Black Cleaver. And again, the wind wall is really gonna fuck with him and in Mininar form. I really don't see why you would go Black Cleaver as a second item when the enemy team has Victor. Because you're just going to get blown up. You need some sort of magic resist if you ever want a team fight. And Black Cleaver does nothing for you in team fights. Yeah, look at that. Okay, did you see that damage? Let's look at that again. How much damage do you take from a Victor ult? I think he took about 600 damage. Be able to make it with all the crowd control coming through. Good night. And, uh, and obviously, he probably would have died there regardless, but you need somebody in your front line to defend against Victor. It's like super easy for Victor to kill him. Victor is incredibly high damage. It has been over a year since COD has been able to take a competitive game off of TSM. 13 kills to 2, 11,000 gold, 3 dragons to 1. They look in position to do so right now. Look back to those days when it was the rivalry. If we can still get it again, it's going to be within these games. Double's not even there. Four Expithy has been... Man, he's just like... He's right so now. inconsistent. As a jungler, like, his mechanics and his game sense about when to engage, it either looks amazing or terrible. There's, like, no middle ground. Be careful how confident he's feeling right now. He runs in already half HP. Does have the home guards on so he can be right back in the battle once he makes the fountain. It looks like okay, well that's it. Down. Doing everything be valuable, plus the play. Also, like the wind, Zion's Barton takes him down. Fast, but not die. Oh, there's Dyer again. again. Like the wind. <laughs> but where did he die? Is also really valuable, plus the play. Also, double it. Oh, he's just getting soloed by Zion. Alrighty. That was a nice one. Okay, well... Turtle with the shot, that's one for him. He's already got an Nexus turret as well. Or double lift, I should say. Turtle now running for the fountain. Turtle goes down, Rip. double lift with another one. Game All right. one, coming up 30 so, minutes in. Very convincing. Oh, 
There were some mistakes that were made by CLG this game. I think they stalled out in the mid-game instead of split pushing properly. Um, which is disappointing with that massive early edge that they got. But TSM, that composition, they really picked themselves. It wasn't a bad comp, but you, you have to have that dragon control, otherwise nothing... You can't really do anything after that. So it's still a little bit shaky on the... Uh, on the CLG, on the CLG side for closing that, because if you have a Yasuo that that's that's so far ahead, it shouldn't really be an issue just to continue split pushing right there. And I pointed out sometimes where they could have gotten some uh, better objectives instead of opting into fights. And I think one of the issues, engage has been a problem with CLG for quite some time, and. We can still see that here a little bit. Xsmithy did well sometimes, Afro did well sometimes, but it's really problematic if you don't have somebody who can do it almost all the time. Because otherwise it creates this confusion in games like this between the support and the jungler as to who is going in or what the ideal team fight actually looks like. Because there was some like they couldn't really decide how they were going to start. If it was going to be an explosive cask, if it was going to be the Glacial Fisher. It should be the explosive cask, but Xsmithy, while hitting some good ones, also just kind of tossed it out there uselessly a lot of the time, or was afraid of using his flash. So I would say that CLG, looking at worlds now, that's probably one of the things they have to work on the most, is communication around team fights when it comes to when it comes to uh, engaging.